Where is the English game? What has happened to England itself? Welcome to the Long Hop Cricket Podcast. And today, in today's rainy day episode, even though the weather has been delightful, we are going to be talking about what has happened to the England talent pool, or catch pool, as Dave was thinking it was. So, Dave, how have you been, mate? Good, mate, good. How have you been? Oh, mate, cracking. Absolutely Be- delightful. I say I don't care when the weather's nice, mate. No? Nothing bothers me. Is um, the old hay fever getting to you? Because look, I'm looking into your eyes now. It's making my eyes water. Yeah, yeah, it does. Bad. That's quite. You're quite early I to get hay fever. Yeah. Well, that's what my uh, my hope is. By mid May, it's gone. It's right. Okay. So well, there's a, different pollens. Must be a particular pollen. That. Yeah, it's different pollens throughout the year. Have you um, uh, this uh, we're recording this on a Sunday morning. We won't be able to do this anymore, will we? Because you'll be playing. I do it in the morning. Oh, uh, okay. We're not going to have a team this year anyway, mate, so it should be fine. <laughs> anyway, mate, so, the England talent pool. Yeah, I think, well, you, you've, on this podcast, come out and said that international cricket's at an all-time low. Yes, I think it is. And England are just showing that their talent pool is very small now. Or uh, or the the world class the choice they have is very small yeah. for international class players. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think um, there are a lot there are a lot of players that could get in and around the England team, but whether they are as good as the rest of the world, the likes of Alistair Cook or Johnny Bairstow, Ben Stokes, Joe Root, Jimmy Anderson, Stuart Broad. Yeah, we've got lots of players, but will come nowhere near to those I mean Stuart Bain's not English so much. players. <laughs> um I think just take for example we've had for a long time had a problem with an opener. Yes. For a, lo- a long time we've had a problem with a number 3. Yeah. And a spin bowler. Yeah. And that I think we've had a a third seamer as well. Yeah. Actually well, having a a a mainstay third scene, which Wokes is kind of probably our I suppose that's best choice. At the, at, that's always been Wokes, Finn, Ball, hasn't it yeah, really? Yeah, exactly. It's all, it has moved around a bit. Um, I think we have, especially for the bowlers, because if you look at England's bowlers now, if we were to say that the top four bowlers, Ben Stokes is your rounder, yeah. your three seamers would be Broad, Anderson, uh, either Wokes or Wood, Yes. But then you've got, there's lots of bowlers that come in. So we've got Ball, Finn, Debbie Redden Jones, Overton, yeah, uh, Tom Curran. He's the lad who played in the Ashes the game. Very slow bowler. Overton, yeah. Overton, yeah. Tom Curran. That's five names just to list off the top of my head. Our pace bowling, we've got lots of options, but they're not particularly world class options. Exactly. That's where I think the problem where I think England is at the moment is the amount of world class players to pick from is very sparse. Yeah. And I think we the areas that we have good talent. Yeah. We're trying to bodge like crowbar into the team. Yeah, it's yeah. Like we're lower middle order batsmen, we've got quite a lot of. Yeah. That middle order. Yeah. So we we're trying to we try and put them in opening. We try and put them in with a tail. Yeah, well, I think if you look through the England team, world class players: Cook, Root, Bairstow, Stokes. Do you mean world class as in now? Yeah. Right. As in, like they would be in and around most international teams, yeah. without a problem. Okay. And then the two bowlers in Jimmy and Brody. Yeah, I mean. That's only broad's arguable, but what's that? Six players, half I a mean, team. Yeah, yeah. But if you take it back to well, two thousand five or two thousand eleven. Yeah, two thousand five is what almost fifteen years ago now. Yeah, uh, the two openers were world class, Tresco and Strauss. Yes, were they at the time though? Yeah. Were you they? Compare them to the guys. Or did they prove it nah, in that series? Nah. Compa- compare them to the guys we've got now. They're 
No, I no, I'm no, I'm not arguing they're not. I think they I'm are. I'm saying world at class. the t- at the time. Yeah, I think they are world class. They were. I even think? think Michael Vaughan was world class at that point. I don't think Michael Vaughan was. I think Michael Vaughan had had his best batting days were behind him at that point. Um. Well, okay. So the uh, the openers, I I think Strauss definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Tres, Tres Gothic definitely. Yes. Yeah, I think you might be right about Vaughan. Eh? I Maybe. think he, I think he was perfect captain at that point yeah at the back end of his career and with loads of experience th- those, that 2002 three ashes po- possibly was, was a world class captain at that yeah, point yeah so he's getting in your team yeah <coughs> but maybe, yeah maybe slightly a couple of years yeah. out because his batting <coughs> he was an opener wasn't he yeah he's but a very good opener his batting never really took off in the same vein of format we've seen other English yeah I mean okay the England captaincy can be a um, a bit of a voodoo on, on yeah. players yeah but if you look at Strauss, Cook, Root, those three mainstay, they're all better batsmen than Vaughan, yes. if you like. Uh, who's the number four? Belly? Belly w- w- did become a world-class player. Post, after 2009, yeah. he was world-class. Belly did become world-class. He had sort of four years of just being one of the very best middle-order batsmen. And number five was KP. KP. And KP was just about becoming world class at that yeah. moment in time. Well, he was given the chance to yeah. show it, wasn't yeah. he? And then yeah, he, pr- he almost came in the It's strange, isn't it? I know he's one of the best players that we've ever seen play, especially in an England kit. But he he you know, Ian Bell didn't come in as a world class player, but Kevin Peterson did. Yes. Freddie was world class. Yeah. Garrett Jones was not world class keeper. No, so he wasn't a world class. I think he was probably our weak point. In that team. Yeah, so it's two players in Vaughney and Jonesy. Um, Although Vaughney's getting in on someone else, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, Gilo, world class? No. The three pacemen of Jones, Hoggy and Harmison, they're all yeah. world class, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, along with Freddie Flintoff. I mean, that is yeah. an unbelievable bowling attack. So you've got you've got Gilo, Jonesy and Michael Vaughan. Michael That's Vaughan might be a little bit harsh uh, on. Yeah, I think Michael Vaughan gets in. So you've got, you got, you got two, two players in that team. Yeah. That aren't world class, and you know we're not gonna. Get, we might go through the 2011 team later, but that's a world class team in its own right. Yeah. At the moment, England are in a slump for those world class players. You know, um, Vince might do a belly, but at the moment he's behind where Bell was at 2005. Yeah. You know, uh, again, David Malan. I don't. I don't think he is. <coughs> no. Ian Bell did very badly in his first stint in the England team. And then he went away, played county cricket for a while and came back in 2009 and was a much better player. Much better. Well, why aren't England producing those yeah. those same players? It's difficult, isn't it? Do you think it's more a sign that the 2005 like push it gave cricket is just dying out now? Do you think we're on the, f- the, like, the fag end of that now? Yeah, I think it's sort of... That whole generation that were like inspired and made cricket big is is sort of there's nothing going on now with that. It's kind of dying out. Yeah. Um then at the same time, if you were ten when you were watching that, you'd be playing first class cricket now. You're twenty five. Yeah. yeah. That's a long time to stay inspired for though, isn't it? From one series. Well, this, <coughs> we got the podcast. <laughs> well, series. Yeah. I mean, there's probably... I don't know how, how the talent pool has got smaller. But if... It, it, or what? is it that? Or have other international teams just become much stronger? No, no, they've stayed. They haven't, though, have they? Like, look at West Indies. West Indies, okay, we can talk... Till the day is done about uh, the f- the finance situation with uh, West Indies Cricket Board and how they're not putting money in lower, you know, grassroots, which I think England can be guilty of, but they seem to be better at that now. West Indies have been bad for a long time. Yeah, though. but then you go back to 2005. Yeah, they did have world class players in Brian Lara, Shiv, uh, Chris Gale, Bravo. I think they had two. You not think? I think Shivna and Shandapal and Brian Lara. I think that was still a weak period for West Indies cricket. I think compared to their past, I think you've got 
When was the last time they competed? Well, they won the T20 World Cup. You see, are you talking purely for test cricket? Yeah. Um, I think I think test cricket is where this topic lies. Yeah. I don't think I I think we're having more more players than ever at ODI cricket. Yeah, we are. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're really strong. I think in ODI cricket. So is it has it been a shift in? Um, I don't. Well, do I want to say kind of? Uh, not favoritism, but we see players now retiring from anything longer than white ball cricket. Any red ball cricket, we see players like Hales and Rash. Yeah. Then I don't want to be part of four day cricket and go. Are they prioritising the white ball stuff? And then is that gonna? Is that having an effect? Is the white ball game having an effect on Test cricket and, I, our, and, and our pool of players? I think it's the money injection into one day international cricket and 2020 cricket if you said to jason roy you're not going to play or there's no money in it or for some reason they were able to bump uh red ball cricket in front of white ball cricket as a 15 year old lad do you think he would be one of the best he would be a world-class test player now would you you think if they I, had the I impetus at a, at a younger age? Because obviously the players like Joss Butler, yeah. Jason Roy, Alex Hales, probably from a young, like a, at a young age, yeah. went down that power striking white ball cricket. Um, I think it's been road. over the last sort of five years, I think. Yeah. That players, it's just now known you can make a lot of money so playing you, that format of the game. Have you seen what the ECB have brought out with the hundred ball game? No. So you, so you, you see, the England, so either ECB are going to shoehorn in a new tournament, right? Which I'm not sure if it's going to take place instead of T20s, but it's just an English. It's not happening anywhere else in the world, right? Okay. Hundred balls each, right? Uh, so it's like like sixteen point one overs. Just make it cracking for the stats. Oh, it's, it's a countdown, isn't it? You have yeah. 100 balls, you yeah. have 99 balls, yeah. and then the countdown. They go, you, you'll lose about, in a game, probably about, I don't know, uh, seven, eight overs. Yes. Um, is T20 cricket killing cricket? I saw a brilliant tweet the other day. Killing cricket for people who don't really like cricket. Ooh, you're going to have to explain that to me. So 2020 killing the game for people who don't like it. Yeah, so, right. If I said to you, if I said to you, you say you brought over a friend. Yeah. We have a friend here. And we say, um, do you want to watch a bit of cricket? Uh, the test match is on. Right. And he's just like, no, nah, I don't right. like cricket. Yeah. He's like, do you want to watch a bit of T20 cricket then? It's a bit more hit and miss. And he's just like, no, nah, not really. Maybe. Right. Watch it. He's not that mad on it. Okay. And what we're saying is, we're really pushing T20 cricket for people who don't even like cricket. We're trying oh, to get I see them what you're saying. In. Right. We're it's, ruining our own game. It's in like, order yeah. To get people we, who are not interested anyway. Yeah. And it's like right. the, the people that, the things that people love, which arguably T20 cricket is a thing that people love. I, I've got no problem with that. But then we're bringing in new things like the 100 ball. Or we just keep on killing. We're almost like sh like sniping off our current audience. Yeah. So we're, we're sort of, that you know, like, this is going a little off track, but I'm going to bring it back to what we're talking about. Like TV shows, yeah. some of them are just massive and everybody loves them, right? Yeah, yeah. So everyone's like, oh yeah, that's all right. And everyone watches it. But some have to, like only some people discover them. Like they're not big when they go on telly and then people find them afterwards and it's like a cult following. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think cricket was kind of like a, or at least test match cricket, it was kind of like, or you'd find a couple of people that really liked it. I think when we were growing up, certainly, but I think... But but now, I think, like you say, they're now targeting the people who have never been interested in it. Yeah. And sacrificing the small market. They're almost they, alienating yes, the others, yeah. the small market they had already, and they're going to end up with nothing. I know, it's a, it's a, this 100-ball game, you know, don't... It's odd, isn't it? Because I think T20 cricket is doing really well. Yeah, well, it is. I mean, e every country is trying yeah. to get its own franchise. And of then when we, cricket. if we were to go down to any, which we will go to down to any ground in England on yeah. a T20, the weather is good. It will probably be 
absolutely rammed. There'll be a profit being made by the club, yes. right? Why not, as the ECB, put the money in to those games that aren't <clears throat> doing, rather than trying to make another cash cow? Yeah. It's almost like you're making a loss on such and such. You need to, instead of just ignoring such and such, because you it's like a requirement, why don't you try and improve it? Why don't you try and put money into it? Why don't you try and make that better? It's interesting because, just thinking, our argument here is is that this the 2020 and the money being put into it is yeah. killing our talent pool for test match cricket, right? Yeah. Potentially. Well, that, that, I, that's a very good question to ask. not happening in other countries, is it? Is it not? Well, India are really strong and they've got the IPL. I think it's more uh, the way test match cricket is viewed. But I hit, think right. it's got more prestige to play for India in test match cricket. Here's a question. In right. India than playing for England in test About match Indian cricket. Indian players, without obviously, I, this means no offence to anybody who is an Indian fan? Right, you got a, you've got a thing with India. You have it's a big country, mate. Don't go against India. Um, with Indian conditions, right? Let's talk purely about bowling. <laughs> are you going to go on the? They only play at home. Um, you are. Can an Indian spinner or an Indian player, because they know those conditions so well, mm-hmm. there's not much of a change between T Twenty and very good batting conditions and then it starts to turn and then it will break up and then it will dust is the the differences between test match cricket and T20 cricket slightly somewhat smaller than it is if you were to go to England or if you were to go to New Zealand or if you were to go to Australia even yes is, uh, I, don't are know. Those I don't know because the t- you're not telling me that a 2020 pitch in India changes the same no, amount as it, it does when no. they play a test match but game. what I'm saying is that and people don't bat the same. In in India, yeah. although there are very good strikers of the ball, I feel like they've... Oh, yeah, it's so de- I don't want to generalise because it will start picking holes in my actual knowledge. Right. But what I want to say is it doesn't swing around corners. <laughs> What's your point? I don't get what you're saying here. So just can the let's say the just s- generalize. We know this is a general. St- just do it. What what are you saying? <laughs> um, like the uh, you think the conditions, the foundations of an Indian cricketer, right? And then a little bit more, you know, like well, I don't, I don't know the words, but the the, the makings of an Indian cricket cricketer yeah. will prove very successful in both Test cricket and T Twenty cricket. While in different conditions, like New Zealand, South Africa, England. Those foundations of test cricket is completely different to those foundations of right, okay. T20 cricket. So you think it's easier for a, if you are Indian, having played in India, yeah, played 2020 I cricket, think it's easier to go into the test match game in India? If Alistair Cook was Indian, then I think he would have more success in white ball cricket. Not the same as an MS Dhoni, no way. Right. MS Dhoni is a special talent that can do that. And the Yuval Singh is the same. But... What do you think about that? Is that too general? Is well, it? I don't know because their their test match team, they do play a lot at home. Yeah. It's still twenty twenty in test match cricket, even yeah. though it's being played in the same conditions, and they yeah. play in their conditions yeah. a lot, which I think is fine if you can get away with it. I'd love England to just play in England, but the weather's so rubbish, we'd never play. <laughs> but I think some for some reason, you're not. I mean, they have pumped the most money into twenty twenty cricket. Yeah, and yet their their test team has definitely benefited from it. Do you think it's because th- their Imagine, test team yeah. is very strong? They, they've probably got. I think they Indian India have got the best team across all formats. If so you like, if you have it as a whole, their captain's a perfect example. I know you don't yeah, like him, but he's a fantastic he, he, player. He was found through one day cricket. Yeah, he was found, and he's becoming one of the best players in Test match cricket. So do you think India? Is an anomaly to the. But then let's move move over to Australia. Yeah, but how long? How, I got uh, you look at the Australian team. Yeah, and that is nowhere near good enough. Well, it's no good now, is it? Uh, no, it's well, it's. I'd even go as far as poor now. We yeah. haven't seen them in action. That back in that South Africa series, difficult to judge because of what was going on. But we, I read the lineup on a few podcasts ago. That's not an Australian team anymore. I They're in gonna, the sense of it, it's going to take them a lot. You can't. I mean, they're going to have to rebuild. I think they were still in the rebuilding phase. 
before this happened. And then, I mean, this is going to. Well, really imagine if England's world class players. Imagine if Alistair Cook, same as David Warner, world yeah. class, and Joe Root, same as Steve Smith, world right. class, was just pulled out of the team for I England know. team. Look at that. That's just yeah. So it's gonna it's gonna take them. It's gonna take them two years, isn't it, before they're allowed to come back and play for them again? <laughs> it's gonna take them a year, isn't it? At least. But and then a year after that, probably to just settle everything down. The interesting thing is they have started putting money into twenty twenty cricket with a big bash. Yeah. How long do you think if our if my theory of the IPL has helped India right. with a yeah. a bigger talent pool for Test match cricket? Yeah. How long is it gonna take for them to see the benefit of the big bash? Or is that not the reason for the talent pool? Um, in a cricket, I believe in India is the number one sport, right? Yes, that's a national sport. Uh huh. So I think the T Twenty cricket was a top of on what that was already a national sport. Yes. In Australia, it's has got the same dominance in sport, and in other countries, it certainly hasn't. Right. So maybe the. Maybe that top up, that T Twenty top up, if you like to call it, is the push. Go and go and do this. Everyone's interested in T Twenty cricket. Look at India. Look at the IPL. Yeah. What a fantastic tournament that is. Go and th- that's that little push you need to keep players or to keep younger players interested and wanting to. I think continue. I think you've hit on a point that I said before. Of I think it is the prestige of Test match cricket. Do you it is. Ma- I think it is massive in India to play you, Test you match th- cricket for India. So what? I think that is still the pinnacle. I don't think that's seen as the pinnacle in in Engli- English cricket no? anymore. No, people we- people want to make money. The weird thing is in India is the crowds will come out for anything but Test cricket. You won't see the same, which is. Understandable to a to a degree, you won't see the same amount of crowds at a T Twenty game, at a Daredevils game, than you would at an English, uh, Indian Test game. Right, but they. So it, even if the players might uh, hold it above the the fans, might not in certain areas for certain games. Obviously, India versus Pakistan sell out just like the Ashes, but India versus West Indies probably not. Well, but then where at where is India versus you know India versus New Zealand? If it was England versus New Zealand, is it going to be a sellout in England? Probably not. No. Well, I don't, yeah, I think the Ash is the only thing that sells out in England. In I think if you went to Lords of the Oval, it mainly sells out. Birmingham to, a, is it, to an extent. Does it? Well, I went to... Does it? Do you think you could not get a, a ticket the week before any game apart from the Ashes? Oh, I went to... I went to... Um, England versus New Zealand. Right. Uh, yeah, Lords... Right, three years ago now, two years ago maybe, and I got my fourth day ticket on the morning. Yeah, you're right, but it was effectively a sellout because they had tickets left, but people were getting one that morning due to the state of the game, just like uh, me. Yeah, okay. And on the fifth day, it was a sellout, and we had to do that. You know that famous lining up all down the yeah down to the tube station. <laughs> we had to go and do that. Um, those London games, depending on the weather and the game, will definitely sell out. While those, you know, maybe the Yorkshires or the Lancashires, the Durhams, the Cardiffs won't necessarily sell out all the time or won't have the same uh, uh, probability of selling out as those so, so you don't, London games. Are you saying you don't think there is a different view of playing for your country in Test Match cricket in India? No, I think, I think, people, I think England's very good at still keeping Test Match cricket as number, as number one. I don't think the players are bothered. No, <laughs> no, no. Seriously, no. I don't think it. I, I, I'm not. I'm not saying that for all of them, but I think generally, as a player playing county cricket, yeah, that's not the pinnacle playing Test match cricket for England. What is the pinnacle? That I, I, I don't think. It, the IPL? I don't think it car- no, Yeah, I don't think it carries anything anymore. It's hard because I would. If you are good enough, you will. If you're not good enough, let's say, all right. This might be harsh, but Alex Hales, Adil Rashid, let's say they're not good enough for Test cricket. Right. They will probably their what they believe is their pinnacle will shift, won't it? They right, okay. They want to go and play. Yes, I see. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Owen Morgan, who isn't good enough for Test match cricket, will probably say my 
the pinnacle is. You're saying it's like a kid at school not making a football team, so I don't like football anyway. No, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll never play rugby. He's <laughs> yeah. a big kid, right? He, he's, he's, he's too chubby to play football. Football's rubbish anyway. He wants to go and play rugby, yeah. Right. And it's like, you know, it's like, it's exactly right. It's like, oh, you know, I'm not that great at it. So I, I think there are people getting into cricket who are very, very good. Yeah. Who aren't bothered about test match cricket. And I don't yeah, think that's no, ever yeah, happened well, before. Yeah. I think look at players like Narayan. Right. Look at those. Um, You're not telling me he's not good enough. Well. Look at Malinga. Yeah. Yeah. Prime example. And then there's lots of different players out there. Uh, you know, Tate to an example. That they, right. That well, the Australian. Yeah. Guy. The Australian first. Well, I think he's more due to injury, to be fair to him. Yeah. But yeah. He has had a lot of injury problems. But I think he was probably more successful in ODI cricket than ever he was in Test match cricket. Maybe I'm just taking a step in the dark. Well, I th- he's definitely done better, but I think he's... But then a lot there, there are there are one day specialists. That that term now is coined a lot more than it was fifteen years ago. Yeah. Well, just look at the teams fifteen years ago. Michael Vaughan was the captain of the ODI team and the England. Michael Vaughan has I don't think ever scored a one day hundred. Right. He's not a particularly good hundred. Uh, sco- uh, that's the same before that. Michael Atherton or whoever. And now you got people like <coughs> Klinger, yeah, that Australian guy. Yeah. He, he's like pretty old. Yeah. And he's just now you've got formats where you can make it. I think, yeah, yeah, you're, you're exactly right. There are players that are you know, Morgan, for example, Josh Butler. Um, they'll have a go at the Test cricket if they get the opportunity, but they are they've been pruned, if you like, to play. They've been made just to play that white ball. Do you think game. it comes down now as the game goes on? So, say in the next ten years. It's going to get worse because coaches at the highest level, so at county cricket, who are bringing yeah. through the grassroots players, yeah. are not looking for perfect technique oh, and question, yeah. mindset of this guy batted for an hour against our bowling attack in the nets and didn't get out. Then they're, they're not really looking for that anymore. Now they look look at this. This guy hits the ball cleaner than anyone I've ever seen. And now they're probably. The message that's going to be well, getting to people is go, you want to make a career yeah, yeah. in cricket, yeah. you're going to have to go at a run rate of whatever. Or Let, Well, let's say, uh, you look at players of the past, Luke Wright, OHR. Yeah. If they were coming up now, if those players were coming yes. up, and a coach, a coach could quite easily go to them and say, we think you're very, very talented. But why don't you just put your efforts into... White ball cricket. Yeah. Then you could be extremely rich by touring yeah. the world and playing white yeah. ball cricket. I know you've both tried it in the test. Well, they, they both tried it in I the test I think that's a, just a general message. Yeah. I don't even think they would be targeting that. Then I also that think... That would be what they were looking for. You know, imagine Kevin Peterson, if he came up now. Yeah, exactly. Would he ever... Would would a, would a coach, a team, or his mentality ever say, I want to play test match cricket? It'd that's the worry, worse. I think. Because those, those players that... We've seen come through to the England team. Yeah, Ben Stokes to a degree. Uh, yeah, well... It's dangerous now. Is white ball cricket going to say, yeah, actually, you I don't... I think it's going to be much harder for people like uh, Hamid to get through now. What do you think they're going to... Do you not th- <laughs> don't think he's got that... We'll label him as a test player and that kind of saves him to a degree? Yeah, but it... But yeah, tr- I mean, try and get noticed as that. Okay, now. so try and get because out, all yeah. the formats for our cricket as you're young are short forms of the game. They don't play long forms. No, of, of the course game. not. No, no. I, w- I went to uni with uh, uh, someone who played low level Sri Lankan cricket, so yeah. for Sri Lanka at a low level. Yeah, and they bat for hours. They play really long forms of the game oh, they when play, they're young. Yeah, okay. But yeah, I played at a reasonable standard when I was young, not like county or anything. But it's all short forms of the game. Yeah. You're not going to get spotted having survived 15 overs, having got 30 not out. If you go out there and blast a 60, that's the person who's going to go, oh, you've got potential. Has that always been the case, though, do you think, in England? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think if you have excellent technique, that was what people were looking for. Do you think, you know, when, uh, let's say... I don't know, when Michael Atherton was a young lad. Yeah. 
I think he. Uh, how many overs? Do is it forty overs? Twenty? Well, thirty overs. I imagine he was privately educated. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, that's yeah. a massive difference. But let's say um, those players in and around Athens era. Yeah. And they're playing on the weekends. Yeah. They're going to go and play. They're hoping to get spotted by a county or go and have county trials, right? Aren't they still playing those 40, 50 over games? But are you saying that there are people are looking at... If I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what would have happened, and I'm guessing at this, but my guess would be he will have played when he was like 14. Right, for... For the under-14s or whatever. Been very, very good and had... The under-14s of what, his school or... Yeah, or, what, or, or his club. Right, okay. And shown, obviously, brilliant technique. He'll have been yeah. coached correctly. Yeah. And good timing. They'll have then gone New Hampshire game for the under seventeens when he's still fourteen yeah. and gone out and performed very well. Not, yeah. not scoring massive like but showing that he's in, got a foundations but of he wouldn't have gone out. He'll have played beautiful shots yeah. and he'll have got seventies and stuff. And and then he'll have been playing like men's cricket by the time he was sixteen. Yeah, at a massively high standard. Right, I don't okay. think that happens anymore. No, you, no, you go out and get a nice thirty looking absolutely solid, they go, oh, you can come and play next week. Yeah, okay. Not do you fancy going up a standard. Right. The kid who goes out and just melts these kids all over the yeah. ground because he's, hey, grown, the a, he's grown a year cricket, yeah. They'll go, oh, yeah, that's the guy. Uh, what, what about if... Um, I saw something interesting... And that is a complete guess. <laughs> but I, tr- I saw something interesting. We've obviously... We have made an assumption that potentially the gene pool for test cricket has been affected by the white ball game. Yeah, the gene pool, the whatever the talent pool, talent pool, catch. gene pool. <laughs> <laughs> the, the way that people are making babies has been affected right. by. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I saw something interesting from a fan the other day, not one of ours, who went. He said, um, "Is it a crime for me to like T Twenty cricket more than Test cricket? Like, why do people go out there and?" We do it. We right. just we call it silly cricket, whatever. Yeah. But the, this fan, this this person was saying, is it a crime? Like, what what's wrong with it? Why can't I just like T Twenty cricket? I what? mean, well, you can, you you can, but I well, I think people do. But I think it's because you need such a higher understanding of the game to in to enjoy. A brilliant test match. Yeah. And you're much more likely to come across a game that's won by five runs in 2020 cricket if you watch like three games of it. Does um, T20 cricket, do you think T20 cricket can does actually feed people onto test cricket or do you think people just stick with T20 cricket? I know it's hard to put the... I, I, again, I think, it, I think it comes down to... I don't know. It's probably player. I don't think it does. I was going to say it goes player by player, but people who are making it in 2020 cricket are probably going to be now, are probably not going to be looking to try and change their game so they can make it in test match cricket, are they? So I'll tell you what I'll, I'll do. I'll take a drop in wage and yeah. uh, not just go out for four hours and make a killing. I'll go out for five days and see if I can make less money. So then what does, let's say you get the budget for this 100, this 100 ball game, right? Let's say you scrap that and you get the budget. You're top of ECB, right? Nice. What, what can you do? What will you do? I talk to Straussy a lot, ask him some questions. I like Strauss. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what would I do with that? Uh... I don't know. That's a good question. It's very hard. What would I do for that? I might go on like a a long term plan of I wouldn't change twenty twenty cricket. No, I think twenty twenty cricket should be here. To start, I think, but I'm going for so. But I would look to, on the short term to take a hit on making money. So I would look to make less money from four day game at right, county yeah, level. Yeah. So I would change ticket prices completely. Yeah, I was thinking this the other day, right? Let's say you charge 18... That's not, even, that's not even doing anything with the budget. £18, right? Yeah. But £18 of an empty chair is zero. Yes, exactly. 
why not just charge fiver? I know it's ridiculous. And just see what it's like for a season. Yeah. Or for three weeks. Because I don't think you're going to make... It's going to be massively different. And even if the first game, right, you, or the, or whatever, you make a massive loss, then chalk it down and go on to something else. Yeah. I think that needs looking at. But I also don't think the there's any sort of advertisement for it. What do you think... You're right there, I think. And we've spoken at, de- on, at depth about uh, terrestrial television and all yeah. that. We don't necessarily particularly need to go down that route again. Lots of people know where we stand on that. Um, oh, what? You do test match special have lost internet away games. What do you mean? That they've lost the broadcasting rights. Well, they don't cover it. They won't cover this winters, I don't think. Or is it the next winters? They won't. They won't cover Any Sky at Sri Lanka. They'll cover the home games. They lost it to Talk Sport. How disgusting. Oh no, it's gone. The international, the away games, they've lost the rights to broadcast them. So how do you, what, so they don't do it? So there would be no test match special in that capacity of broadcasting it live, no. So they just, it doesn't happen anymore? Well, for whatever that, for away games, for whatever the top, the, the contract of that time, that length says, yeah, that, w- that won't be happening. Well, that's what I'll do with my budget then. <laughs> I'll just give it all to Test Match Cricket so they can buy it back. That's um, ridiculous. Uh, what was it? Um, yeah, but I just thought of that. I thought, what about the scheduling? Um, should it all, in, in the moment, it's all blocked up, isn't it? So you have four day cricket, you have one day cricket, you have T20 cricket. Yeah. Block, block, block. Why not intermingle them a little bit? Instead of having all the four day cricket at the start of the year when it's hooping around corners. Yeah. Why not have it when it's baking and the kids are off from school? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> the T20 cricket most definitely should be there because you, you need the money, right? Yeah. And you don't want to tempt the money away from that because yeah. the, the money needs to come. But why don't you just say, right, a kid might go and watch Hampshire versus uh, Sussex and it might be 200 plays 200 in a great game, Yeah. T20. And then three days later... That kid's like, oh, I love cricket. Is anything going on back at Hampshire? Oh, what? Hampshire are now playing Lancashire in a, yeah. in a game. A four-day cricket. Mom, can we go? Dad, can we go down to that just for the afternoon even? I'll pay my four quid to go and just for the afternoon session. Yeah. No, I just want to go and watch some more cricket. That could, uh, yeah, I agree. That, getting on those impulses, that, like getting on that, you know, let's fire up some love for it rather than putting it in blocks. And I think it's yeah more than just making money. We 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 looked at the get the scores the other day, and if you look at the scores again, teams aren't making massive runs because it's hooping around corners. Some games aren't being played because of the rain. Yeah, we're playing it so early in the de- in the game, in the in the year, and there's a problem with the with with the scheduling, with the with the talent pool thing that we were talking about. Yeah, do you think South Africa are struggling for talent? Because they, they don't have a 2020 franchise, do they? But I wouldn't say that their their international team is as weak, is like, is very weak, is it? Their international team? Mm. Although I think Good they're, they're going to be, in a few years, they when do the have Morkels, a... the Staines, De Villiers, those players start start to think about retirement, I think then we'll get an idea of of um how how much they have to fall back on once those players start calling it a day yeah because the spine of the south african team so, right, has so been I've, the same for a very long time so africa do have a t20 franchise it's just not as big as right IPL. well so do west the, indies yeah. but it's and tiny. so do pakistan and so do bangladesh right. and whatnot. um i think it's so difficult south africa what's their number one sport rugby South Africa? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it could be. I'm not sure. Well, I, I'm always comparing it back to England, right? England's number one. Well, where does cricket rank on England sports? Football number one. Soccer, F- football, football number, number one. one. Easy. What's number two? Rugby. Yeah. What's number three? Cricket's going to be battling, I would say. No, what's it battling with? I don't know if there Listen, is. when I was at primary school, I didn't play cricket. Never played a game of cricket. Played school. rounders. You played rounders. I didn't play softball. 
And I think, uh, I, I don't want to uh, uh, start taking chunks out of the national curriculum or the PE teachers yeah, or whatever. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but cricket... Are you saying if you had the chance to teach the national curriculum, <laughs> you would teach cricket? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying if I was a primary school... if I was a pro- pro- No, if I was a primary school student, right. someone put a cricket bat in my hand... When I was in reception class, you'd have been making would, money from playing the game. Now I would be no, making <laughs> making money. I'd be owning. Mo- I'd be owning the game. Would you have got into the IPL? You would. You just sold out. Um, That's what you're saying. I would. Have you'd f- have put yourself out of selection uh, for England. No, no. Test match cricket. <laughs> <laughs> you. I would be like Jonathan Trott. who could just play at all <laughs> games, but at the same. Le- Do you remember when he used to play ODI cricket and just be on 120 at the end of the innings? Just be like, oh yeah, he's just won the game there, and then he'd just do it again. I miss Jonathan Trott. The weird thing about Jonathan Trott is, right, I don't know, this podcast has kind of been a very nice trap about all things. Right. Well, let's just get on to Trotty. Um, he is a player, right, Yeah. that played all formats of the game, was fairly successful. Very. Maybe not a T20. I don't think he played 2020, did but he? Certainly white ODI cricket. ODI cricket and test match But cricket. played it in you the same manner, in the same shots, well, just uh, uh, accelerated... Level. That's what I'm saying. I think he is definitely one who was bit. To be fair, though, was he built in South Africa or was he built in England as a as a player? Mm. I think the foundations mm. were built in South Africa. Good, yeah. The it. foundations were built in South Africa for 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 the player that he is. I'm not saying he didn't develop and get better so you, in I, England. South Africa might. Produce very good players, but due to the political climate, they lose a lot of them, kind of thing. Well, yeah. And I just don't think we produce Jonathan Trott. So I think we're lucky that he moved to England so he can play for us. In England, how accessible... I know I was ranting about me never never playing it as a, as a child, but how accessible is cricket? What do you mean? How what Being able to play it? Yeah. Well, it's very. Is it? Yeah, but I just don't think it's something is it, that... Is it not similar to golf in that respect? No. Of, okay. I, I golf go- is the by far the worst. Golf is the very probably the most elitist sport, right? Yeah. Or polo. Yeah. If you is, need a horse to do it, it's horrific. You're gonna- yeah. <laughs> 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 like, if you need a horse to play, then it isn't for everybody, right? Golf and- is terrible. But again, golf depends which country in england awful you go to scotland yeah they're all like municipal I, golf courses so tell you what about cricket is i don't think cricket has that stigma and has that elitism attached to it by those who play the game yeah rather than maybe golf might do or and especially the polo. i can tell you golf is horrific right okay i think anybody is up for playing cricket in some uh, yes. respects it's just and there's no okay you're such and such you're from this town you're from that yeah. you've got this amount of money you can't play um, but I think the level the requirements to go and play cricket is steeper than most sports which will stop a lot of, a lot of people playing and those requirements are a knowledge of the rules or well, you think the entry level is ho- way higher than is so much well definitely than football I mean that's why football is internationally so massive it, I, I, even there is no than, entry level to yeah, football yeah and, and there's if get, you can if you can run around and kick a ball you can play doesn't you, matter yeah you can play on your own you don't even have to be able to kick the ball you can just tackle people doesn't matter I think there's a lot of things in, and a football is a lot cheaper than a cricket bat yeah and you can make it you could just make a football out of whatever you want and you can do that with cricket, but I suppose, can't you? I remember at school, we used to play with a shoe. <laughs> I used to... Um, right, in it, form, we used to get paper towels out while they sing. Yeah. Great tip for anyone. Paper yeah. towels, crunch them up, sellotape. You've got yourself a cracking indoor ball. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Absolute winner. And here's a, here's a secret of mine, which I've never said on the podcast. <laughs> I used to wicket keep, right? But... If it was too, if the person was born too fast, I would call him no ball. <laughs> so wicket keeping. Yes. <laughs> Why? So why would you call it? What because you didn't want to catch it? Like if we, due to this. What with a wimble? Due to the chances <laughs> of me not catching it, or it. If mo- you if you were just 
you, what you're saying is you were a terrible wicketkeeper, and when it started going bad, you'd just try and blame the bowler. And like, say if the bowler put it down leg side, I'd be like, no ball. Your league cricket, or your league cricketer. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like, that's a why, mate. You can't bowl down the leg side. Well, I, that's because like I used to stand up to the stumps. So. Yeah, nice man. <laughs> 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 anyway how are you calling a no ball <laughs> like a keeper it's too fast <laughs> it's like you must be bowling off 18 yeah. <laughs> oh dear um, did you scream it before the batsman hit it no no it'd be like you'd inform him once you tried to catch it and it hurt your hands it would, it would go down leg side right I'd be like well, that was mate no, you can't bowl there that was a no, no ball, ball obviously <laughs> like, like what are you doing like, why don't you bowl it properly um what I was saying is, yeah, the entry requirements to get into cricket is far steeper than most sports, and that's going to have a detrimental effect on the. But that's natural. That will, that happened fifty years ago. That's happened a hundred years ago. That will happen in fifty years' time. Yeah, I, I think what, what just to go back to the gene, po- the, <laughs> <laughs> the way that Alistair Cook's mum and dad pool. got together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the talent pool. Let's go back to the talent pool. Um. Let's talk about the talent pool currently for English cricket. We spoke about that uh, we think white ball cricket's had an effect. Uh, maybe the money for the ECB hasn't been distributed properly. Uh, the restrictions of the actual sport. The way that county cricket is being run. We've, we've, we've mentioned all these problems, right? Yeah. But let's get to the actual talent pool of England cricket right at this very second in time. What test match? Because uh, that's what's shrinking. Yeah, that's the talent Let's, pool for test match cricket is for getting those, smaller. For those fans who are white ball play, white ball lovers, and yeah. might want to listen to this podcast just for. Let's just quickly talk about it because you know swipe across it because there's not a lot going on yeah. really. Um, there's a lot more going for white ball not cricket, isn't there? Yes. You know, I think if we're going to name players, there's the likes of Sam Billings, who in the last podcast, I think I said he's made for the IPL. I think the the international ODI series are becoming what, like, the television makes bigger deals of. And they'll be, I'll tell you what they are becoming, which I never thought I'd say, <laughs> more competitive. Or as in closer games? Between, yeah, between between teams. Um and even, you know, it's uh, those battles, even though they're shrunk to three or four over battles, yeah, are way more competitive than watching a battle over, which is such a shame for Test Match Cricket. At the moment, you know, let's take the Ashes we just watched. L- those battles were... Yeah, but do you not think it's just more likely that you're going to have closer battles the shorter the game is? Well, then... Uh, yep, yeah, you're right. Which there. is why it's more popular, isn't it? But what I'm saying is, Test match cricket, those battles are drawn out longer because it's yeah. not hit, hit yes. or miss, and they should be, you know, uh, they should be more enjoyable. They should be heightened compared to those ODI. Those ODI battles should be two or three overs, and then whatever happens happens. But they're they're far more interesting. Test match cricket should be more interesting in the battle between yeah. ball and bat. But again, that's going back to the understanding. Mm. You you have to have an understanding of what is happening to understand that a battle yeah. is going on and listen, in I'm, Test Match Cricket. I'm, I know my stuff. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> what? We lost um, we lost power with Houston then. We have a problem. <laughs> uh, the dog's tongue just came out of its mouth. Yeah, that, that does that. <laughs> she wants cuddles. Anyway, you were talking about the 05, England being underdogs. Right. England were massive underdogs against renownedly the best team in the world, which didn't lose. Yeah. And people, it started getting big, or I remember it as this, when England were in with a shout. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of and course, then that yeah, was yeah, the yeah. only reason there was interest, because England love it when we're rubbish. Yeah. yeah. And we get in with a chance of winning. Yeah. yeah. That's why it became massive. Well, it's like, it's like the, the Rugby World Cup, isn't it? But I don't... I don't and... It was on terrestrial television. Of course, yeah. Um, white ball cricket, there's a bigger pool of players for white ball cricket. Just at the moment, whether that's down to what we've been speaking about, I don't know. Um, there are lots of players in and around the white ball player. And you feel like if Joe Root gets an injury, someone will come in and it won't be that bad. But Joe Root gets an injury in the yeah, test exactly. team. Let's talk about that test team pool. You know, 
what Paul, I think like. it's the opening batsman, that top four. Yeah. Not so much number four, but more than other. But one, but two, it's strange, three. isn't it? You say that. It's like that, that opening batsman slot. We've tried it so many times. Uh, there are players out there. They're just not at the same level. So, you know, we've tried Hamid. We've tried Jennings. We've tried Lithe. We've tried uh, millions. We've tried that yeah, but South African lad. We've tried... Like the talent pool, I want competition for places. I don't yeah. think there is for the opening spot. No? No, not not proper competition. Not where there's another opening batsman trying to knock him out of... There's, there's no one who... If Stoneman has one oh, bad yeah, innings, yeah, yeah. they go, right, you're out because we've got Hamid who's Are right on the tail. At, at the moment, it's more... You're in the test team, you stay in the test team until you do wrong. Yeah. But it's seriously more, wrong. It's more, losing your, it's more losing your place than someone else winning it. Consistently wrong. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So um, Because I think for like the third seam bowler, although Wokes is probably your favourite, yeah. he doesn't have to do too much and someone else do well. And they're gonna they're gonna swap them so out. Do you think like if the, the likes of Wokes, Wood, Ball, and Stephen Finn, there should be do you think if one of them starts hitting form in county cricket and ripping it up, yeah. they're gonna get in the team. You think that's what should happen? That's that's the talent pool. Yeah, isn't it? You you want competition for for places. And if I'm honest, I think the talent pool works better with the bowlers. Yeah, I think England. I think the ECB at the moment, or the captain, or the coach use what we've just said the talent pool should be, you know, the matrix, if you like. Do you think that it goes back to scheduling? It works better yes. for bowlers because they, they play earlier in the year. I think... To, sched- look, to look as a really good player batting it's early in the year, yeah. it's going to be so hard, yeah, you, especially yeah. as an opening batsman when you've got bowlers who well, around corners. I think there's a problem. Let's say, right, let's say if there, there's no... Right, there's no problems in the England team. <coughs> not, I'm not saying that uh, Vince becomes Jonathan Trott, and I'm not saying that uh, Milan becomes Ian Bell. Yeah. But I'm saying that there's no real problems, and Vince and Milan are doing all right, and so is Stoneman, right? Okay. And I'm saying if some North East, or if um, Joe Clark, or uh, these players, Hassid Hamid, start scoring lots of runs, yeah, they wouldn't be looked at. Because of like England are like, no, 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 there's no worries actually. The 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 batters are doing okay. They the batsmen find it harder to push the one of their position into that yeah. team. Or the bowler could say, right, horses for courses, always horses for courses yes, with bowlers. Okay. Right. But with batsmen it's um yes. we'll fix it when there's a problem. You, yeah, okay. Do but, you think we could do a lot for our talent pool? If you look at the very best international batsmen from other countries, yeah, they play around the world. Yeah. At, at four day game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. England players don't do that. No, no. Yeah, how many? Le- the, uh, Cole- ben Stokes went and played in New Zealand for like a week, and he didn't, play, only, didn't uh, play test cricket. Right, he didn't, get, he didn't play cricket that he was bad at. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Coley's desperate to come to England. Loads of players do. Dean Elgar's in England at the moment, uh, desperate to forward his game. Bancroft, is it Bancroft? Bancroft. Yeah, uh, playing for Australia. He's coming and playing Ma- in England now. Matty Renshaw is just. And the Renshaw, I think that's. Is oh it, no, it's but Cameron Bancroft's the one that's been done for cheating. Oh, sorry, I'm thinking of the other one. Is it Renshaw? Yeah, thinking the of young the, lad. Yeah, play, like 19 or 20. Plays for um. England players don't do that. He's playing for Somerset. Yeah, um, and these players aren't coming out here for a paycheck. They're coming exactly. out here so they so when Australia tour, they will know how to play in yeah. those conditions. And you're only yeah to get better at the format. Do you think bowlers should be playing with Kookaburra ball? Because, like, although I like the Duke's ball because it swings around corners. Yeah, well, but when we go out, we are lost. I think lost. it's it's going to be. They should absolutely that that would improve their game massively. And even if they were reasonably average, I would be massively more up for selecting them. You go well. We yeah, got a good guy, yeah, but we've yeah. got a guy. He's gone out there. Yeah, he's played in yeah, those conditions. Yeah. yeah. That like if it's close, yeah. you go with yeah, the guy who's done it before. Yeah. Oh, it's like let, we're going out to Sri Lanka in this winter, yeah. right? And if there's who's, a pla- who's played Sri Lankan yeah, county no. level cricket, no one has, no one, no one. And like, yeah, I think what well, I think the problem is the ECB is very. I don't want to say it's also, but it's, it's stubborn in its approach to change. Do you think we would do better if we? 
pulled in more international stars, or do you think that would hurt? Are you saying four day game more, our talent pool even more? There's two ways to look at it, right? Because if if you bring them in, more people are going to go and watch. But also, but you bring in, let's say, uh, Virat Kohli or, um, you know, <coughs> Rabada. Yeah. Comes to the county. Yeah. To play. Those players that are around him will learn yes. what it's like by a special talent. Yeah. They will learn things from a special talent. Even whether that's just the way you prepare for a game or whether that's the way you train. Yeah. Not necessarily the way that you hit an on drive or the way that you bowl a bouncer. They will learn something from those players. Well but then then on the other hand, you could argue that that's a place that a young British player should be playing in that place. And I think you're right. You know, if Virat Kohli couldn't play for Worcester, I don't like Virat Kohli. You're going to go and watch it, though. I want him to go and do yeah. well. Well, you'd want to go and watch it as well. It's like Ash- to go and Ash- see coming to Worcester is huge. Yeah. And you're telling me that those Worcester players didn't learn anything about from Ash- Exactly. Well, a thing, it's, it's football, but it's the same thing you're talking about. A few years ago, from the last World Cup, Real Madrid signed a player. Yeah. Right? And he turned up to his first training session for Real Madrid four hours early yeah. to show Willing and Ronaldo was already there training when he turned up. Right. <laughs> so it's that, it's that kind of understanding. You just go to be the next level. You need this to is be exposed to but the next ne- yeah, level. you need to see and, it. And I think England cricket exposed their players too early. So let's say, you know, Jennings could be a fantastic player, but we all now have a image in our mind of, Jennings flailing outside his off stump and getting out a lot. Looking loft. terrified. L- looking like a rabbit. Yeah. Was he buried too early because they they pushed him too early? Did he Has he been exposed to the next level in a proper way that would mean success? D- did he have to be like Hassan Hamid rather than being 1920? Did they have to be 23, 24? Because those players are, are talents. But they have to be a little bit later. Can I think they well, it goes player by goes player by player, doesn't of course, it? Yeah. Because Ricky Ponting, he he was playing at an inter- in crazy yeah. standard by the age of fourteen. But Ricky like, Ponting could likely best be one of the top ten batsmen in the world ever, couldn't he? Really? Yeah, but I'm saying that it goes. You got to that comes. I think that comes down to coaching and it's management. Like, it's like Cookie. Cookie went out, took Tresco's place. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think you're right. I think it's for those coaches to the the coach should know whether they should let their player go and play international test cricket, which would be difficult, wouldn't it? If if you got the call up, mm. it would be hard for your mm. coach mm. to go, so no. you shouldn't be playing that standard yet. You're good enough. You will be. Mm. But if you go now, you, you'll get, you know, the chances are you, you'll get buried. Can you name, honestly, let's say, right, James Vince, David Milan. Now, you will, you'll be the first person to say I've got not got great county knowledge, right? Right. But I think you'd have had in 2011, 2009, or 2005. Right. Uh, okay, maybe not 2005 because we were young to okay. it. Okay. But you would have more of a chance of naming a player to come in for those players. Yes. Can you name one that will come well, in? Well, I, I knew in 2005. I knew Alistair Cook. He yeah. scored a double hundred against Australia well, in their, yeah. one of their warm up games. Yeah, there you go. So, um, and I think you know, when even if, yeah, I think I think you're right there. I think we there's just there's very little very good players out there that we can choose from. Yeah, it has got smaller, and it, it's from this just talking about it. It's yeah. actually really hard to identify how how you can change it, yeah. it to make it bigger. It's difficult. I think that people need to give me a job somewhere in that. Yeah? Yeah. Go on. Like, whether that's like on the radio. Oh, okay. Not coaching. No, no. Okay, no, no. nice. Talking about it. Talking yeah. about it. Not on television because I don't think I'll do with that very well. No, not a face for telly. Uh, well, I am. Oh, okay. I, what you're saying is you need a job in radio on cricket and a modelling job outside of it. Is that what you're saying? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the modelling job. Um, okay. I think just... If my local county wants to just get me a job doing something, I'll be quite, pretty happy with that. Worcester, that's well, I'm, I'm saying that the same goes for me as well. 
I think if those... Listen, listen. If you need someone to talk about cricket and you're willing to pay them to do it, I'm yeah. your man. That's all I'm going to say. And I think... I tell you what a big problem is with the with the with the um, with the catchball of cricketers. The, yes, is the local radio coverage on games. Please go into it more. Are you saying they need people who would be willing to take money in order to put it out there for people to listen to? I think that that that, that already happens at the moment. I'm saying that the people that are already taking the money, right, aren't good enough at doing the job. I'll tell you what. I, I'll tell you why they're not. Yeah, Chemistry, well. mate. You need two people. Age as well. Yeah, you need it. young people. Yeah. Who, who only one of them has played the game. <laughs> <laughs> and you need, you know, you need, conf- you need conflict. You need a discussion. Listen, one person who just goes off stats and one guy who knows what he's looking at. I think if you brought in two people as a double team. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you're right. One person that just f- throws out wild accusations because he's read something off a piece of paper with a few numbers on there. Yeah. But then... That's going to get people involved, rather it's than nice. you know some old dragon saying so and so reading out numbers k- like we haven't heard that before. Two hundred and seventy for four. No one knows what that means, oh, mate. Listen, I think this is the way I would do it, right? Right. So the way the ball has been played needs yeah? a catchy name. The way, <laughs> the way the ball's been played, right? So the fast bowler, yeah. Just, um, let's say Stuart Broad is playing for Nottingham. Right, you've already lost me. You've gone off, but go on. If, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you. Yeah, the game scenario, and then maybe me and you might commentate uh, on that uh, game scenario, right? Okay, I see what you're saying. The ship board will will roll, will bowl in. Yeah, bowl in. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come and run in, right? Bowl um, short, wide. Okay, and then uh, duck it. We'll slash it through uh, as a cut shot. Nice. All right. So okay. So, Does he get a boundary or not? Uh, it runs out to the boundary, but then we'll make our mind if it goes there or not. Okay. All right. Um, do you want to get the? R- oh. Okay. Yeah, right. So, are, are we commentating? Yeah, on this, we're, are yeah, we? we're, yeah, we're going we're to commentate on it. This is what it'd be like if we live streamed. Right. So, um. St- <laughs> <laughs> well, so hang on. I'm not sure on the scenario here. Are we live? This is yeah, live. This is live yeah. as like yeah. a test match special. Yeah. Northampton commentating th- on the game. Northampton three hundred and three for four. Stuart Broad running in from the Vauxhall end. Vauxhall right, is. Vauxhall end. Right, okay. Runs in. And you we, you also hear on the stump mic, don't you? Do, 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 do. Yeah. It's two feet landing. Yeah, do, you want, do you want me to do that? Like, oh, that is dog. <laughs> <laughs> and that has got the treatment. The man who looks like Barney Ripple has slashed <laughs> it. Through. That has got exactly what it deserved. Go and on. to be honest, that is exactly what I expect from Stuart Broad, <laughs> that kind of delivery. It's I just don't expect that quality of shot from Ben Duckett. <laughs> but at the same time, do you not think Ben Duckett and Stuart Broad are quite opposites? The ugliest man versus the best <laughs> man. <Okay. laughs> right, I think that's been enough from us. This has been the Long Walk Cricket Podcast. We hope you've enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe. Thumb, thumb, uh, and we, bell. We will be <laughs> back next week with probably some more good content. <laughs> cricket Probably, probably above games. good, I would say. Some IPL Excellent games and whatnot. Content. Um, I've been Dave. Yeah, you have. And <laughs> cheers for listening. And who have you been? <laughs> <laughs> cheers for listening. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Because if you don't enjoy it, I mean, he, we'll, we'll, yeah. stop, we'll stop doing it. He's been Owen. Um,